that one, okay. This is calling to order the Special Arts Commission meeting for August 20th, 2020. Items listed on the agenda, be, oh, I'm sorry, uh, would, the, would the clerk kindly take roll? Chair Breer. Here. Vice Chair Sprout. Here. Second Vice Chair Plaster. Excused. Commissioner Shefsik. Here. Commissioner Tupaz. Here. Commissioner Trimble. Here. Commissioner Carpell. Excuse, Commissioner Curran. Here. Commissioner Loudon. Here. Commissioner Pacheco. Here. Commissioner Strauss. Here. Commissioner Haynes Hamblin. Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Thank you. Are we in compliance with the open meeting laws? Yes, we are. Thank you. Moving into the uh, agenda, we have items listed on the agenda may be taken out of order and presented. Two or more agendas for consideration may be combined in any item on the agenda, may be removed, or related discussion may be delayed at any time. Backup material for this agenda may be obtained from Luann Holmes, City Clerk at the Office of Las Vegas, 49, 495 South Main Street, second floor, or in the city's webpage at www. Las lasvegasnevada.gov. The public is encouraged to send comments electronically prior to the meeting via email. And that goes to meeting comments at lasvegasnevada.gov. Emails must contain the meeting name, the date, and item number in the subject. Emails received up to an hour before the meeting will be considered public record. Read during the meeting were appropriate and would be included in the backup. A time limit may be imposed on reading of comments as is done during meetings when comments are made in person. Since we have some members uh, joining us, uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, you're in a, a public area and so masks are required um, for uh, the, those of us in this partitioned area, we are in a non-public area and so masks are voluntary. Um, if you come up to speak to us, you will be required to wear a mask. Um, now we go to public comment, item number three. Comments during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters of the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Anyone? Moving on. Item number four, for possible action to approve the final minutes by reference of the special meeting of July 16th, 2020. Anyone? So move? moved. All in favor of approving the final minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. Seeing as that, the meetings are approved, or the minutes are approved. Item number five, report by Jim Brewer, Arts Commission Chair, regarding the monthly summary of current initiatives, cultural events, and opportunities. I'll begin by telling that the Climate Change and Creative Innovation exhi Exhibition featuring artworks by Elizabeth Blau, Nancy Good, Steve Horlock, Katie Klemp, Aileen Pasco, and Rosita Todorova is on display through October 14th, 2020 in the Chamber Gallery at Las Vegas City Hall. 495 South Main Street. This exhibition features artworks that explore how climate change alters both life and landscape and the adaptive response to these changes. The Windows on First featuring Bouquet of Fission by artist Sean Russell is on display through July, January 14th, 2021 and available to view at all times at the Las Vegas City Hall, 495 South Main Street along First Street the installation features a collection of three individual artworks that ref represent the visual and metaphorical relationships between a bouquet of flowers and an atomic blast to serve as a reminder of Las Vegas' past and its blossoming present and future. 
the Clay Arts Collective International Exhibition in partnership with locally artist owned and operated business Clay Arts Vegas is on display through October 23rd, 2020 in the Grand Gallery at Las Vegas City Hall at 495 South Main Street. This exhibition features the work of ceramic artists from Delaware, Indiana, Las Vegas, Maryland, Missouri, New Zealand, North Dakota, Paris, Pennsylvania, and Singapore working in collaboration with each to create a unique and global presentation of clay art from around the world. The next item is an Office of Cultural Affairs Public Art Program seeks to commission an artist or team of artists to create an original artwork for the West Charleston Boulevard underpass located downtown Las Vegas. The West Charleston Boulevard underpass is between South Commerce Street and South Industrial Road right there at Grand Central Parkway. The goal of the Public Art Commission is to create a locally distinctive and, e and vibrant entryway into the medical and arts district. The request for proposals will be issued as soon as possible. This year's Contemporary Public Art Program is currently in development with 11 potential locations for temporary public art to be installed. The request proposals will be issued as soon as possible. The request for proposals will be issued as soon as possible for this year's Southern Nevada Public Employee Art Exhibit. Selected artworks will be on display through October 15th, 2020 through January 13th, 2021 in the Chamber Gallery at the Las Vegas City Hall at 495 South Main Street. For more information about uh, the cultural affairs programming, visit www.artslasvegas.org or call 702-229 Arts, that's 2787. Do any commissioners have additional events, happenings that they would like to have mentioned? If I may? Yes. Commissioner Shefsik? Please. The UNLV Marjorie, Marjorie Barrick Museum is going to be opening again starting August 27th. And the exhibition they have up is called Excerpts. Uh, it's work from their permanent collection. Um, there will be limited hours, though, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and by appointment. Uh, all you need to do, though, is go to their website and make an appointment, and the museum will be open uh, again. Uh, I've previewed the show, and there's some wonderful pieces uh, from some of, uh, some of the artists here in, in, in Las Vegas area. So um, you're welcome to, to go see it. So we're, we're back in business. Thank you. John Pacheco, Commissioner. Um, I am doing a little thing I call the world's biggest art show of downtown Las Vegas art, and I am posting it. Every morning I go out at 5 in the morning till about 8 o'clock or and until it gets too hot to stand, and I take pictures of all the downtown murals, and I'm posting them on my Facebook just for something to do. But it's really getting a lot of attention, and people are loving it. So. A lot of people don't know that there's art down, that much art downtown. And, it, and people are just blowing their minds. I'm, doing, I'm taking pictures of all the art from Oki to Stewart. So anyway, if anybody wants to get on my Facebook, John Pacheco, and uh, the picture is a big, a big uh, sunflower and a circle with a bunch of people in front of my apartment for my birthday party. Mm -hmm. So anyway, if you, I don't know if everybody's seen all the murals downtown. It blew my mind. This gives me a reason to see them all. I didn't realize there were such grand artists down here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Pacheco. That, that's something I'm going to look at and be happy to share with my Facebook friends as well. Any other commissioners have any other <coughs> events going on? Uh, Commissioner Tupaz. Um, and, uh, the Art to Art Gallery of the Tivoli Village presents an exhibition of the new generation of local young artists all based in Las Vegas, uh, of which most of their art hasn't been seen before. So this is the opportunity for us here in the community to visit and see the talents of our kids and those who uh, appreciate the ideas of the younger generation in our city. Uh, art to Art Gallery is situated at the Tivoli Village, which is 400 South Rampart Boulevard, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89145. Thank you. Do you know the, excuse me, Commissioner Pacheco, do you know the hours? 
uh, hours, uh, Commissioner Tupas, hours are from 9 till 6, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. every day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any others? Seeing that we have none, we'll move on to item number six. Report by the Office of Cultural Affairs staff regarding the monthly summary of current initiatives. And for that, I will hand it over to our colleagues, uh, Laura and Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Breer. This is Rebecca Holden. So you were all issued electronically a copy of the written arts, um, written project update with the staff report, and we're additionally going to be highlighting a few projects with the following PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. The first project um, that we have on the screen is the Third Street Public Art Project. Um, as we've discussed in meetings prior, the Building and Safety Department has issued an off-site permit and the foundry is currently finalizing the fabrication process of Wayne Littlejohn's atomic tumbleweed. As Chair Breer had mentioned in his um, item number five, we have a new project that's in development, uh, Charleston Underpass Mural Project. Um, we're working on the request for proposal right now and hope to issue it as soon as possible, and we'll keep you updated as it progresses. The three contemporary public art program pieces by Randy Mendre, entitled Four, Solar Walk, and Swizzle, which were proposed at the last meeting at, for possible acquisition into the permanent collection. That acquisition is currently under review and we are coordinating next steps. Another uh, portion of the contemporary public art program, Urban Symphony, by Valentin Yordanov, was deinstalled on August 7th. 2020. We are also, as Chair Brewer had mentioned, we're also developing the contemporary public art program for this year. And we're currently looking at a potential of 11 locations to install temporary public art. And the request for proposals we hope to issue later this week or next week. And we'll keep you updated on that project as well. We look forward to uh, having artists, local artists, apply for this project. Um, it'll be artwork that goes into all six wards. Also, the Historic Markers Project. We are going to be working with the Historic Preservation Commission in order to develop a historical markers program uh, at the next upcoming uh, HPC meeting on Wednesday, August 26th. We'll ask for their involvement, and with their assistance, we'll hopefully move forward with requesting additional grant funding in order to bring that project to fruition. Rebecca Holden, on the subject of maintenance and conservation, our staff regularly conducts uh, condition reports of items in the collection, and then these reports are used to generate a listing of current maintenance and conservation efforts. Members of the public are encouraged to reach out with any maintenance or graffiti concerns relating to the public art collection. You can send an email directly to publicart at lasvegasnevada.gov. We have pictured here two examples of incidents where members of the public reached out to us directly and we were able to go ahead and conduct condition reports and repair or make any uh, graffiti removal efforts as needed. Additionally, on the subject of maintenance and conservation, we are pleased to report that our annual artwork inventory was completed, and we have a total of 827 projects and or artworks and or items that have been documented at this point. So that includes everything from banners along various street improvement projects to posters which have found their way into our collection, uh, sculptures out in the public right-of-way, artworks hung in city facilities. So it's really a vast selection of works. Featured here is uh, the Scarlet Letter by Alexis Smith, which is a vinyl mural that was many years ago installed outdoors at the site as featured. Um, and it has been in storage and it was one of the things that we look forward to addressing after completing this latest inventory. 
Additionally, the Pioneer Trail marker plaque has been noted as missing from the Moulin Rouge site, and staff is going to replace that plaque. The Ansan Sister City Park sculpture repairs are nearing completion. The concrete foundation was reinforced and the tile was installed on top. We do have in a local artist in the queue to come through and clean and repair the bronze as needed. Additionally, the 223 foot long Nautilus mural by Larger Than Life Murals, which was completed in 2002, and located at the municipal pool at 431 East Bonanza Road is to undergo restoration when the weather cools down. And the next project that we're gonna talk about is the Symphony Park Garage Project. And we are happy to announce that Domsky Glass, a local artist team, was awarded the project. The title of the work is Larger Than Life. You can see here a rendering, a maquette that they provided at the proposal meeting. Um, we are currently working with the artists. There has been a slight delay due to COVID-19. So the first project milestone has been delayed, but um, we're mov moving forward. And after uh, the first milestone is met, then we will have an idea on when this will actually be installed. We'll have more information as it develops. Those are representations of people standing next, so you have scale. Rebecca Holden, this concludes the PowerPoint portion of the staff report. Did any commissioners have any questions or comments about projects presented in the staff report here or in the document as well? This is Member Kern. I had a few comments or questions. Uh, first, on the Charleston underpass, that's 100,000 bucks. How, how big is that? That's a good chunk of change for a mural. Uh, is it both sides of the underpass? Yes, oh. actually, if we can b bring the slide back up. Rebecca, thank you. It is an extremely large area, and half of that budget is for the artistic services fee. The other half is just for materials. So we are working with a local paint distributor. We re requested a quote based on the square footage that's shown there in the highlighted areas. And Those red lines are the whole, all that's gonna be mural? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So I thought it was just underneath the, uh, the bridge and that seemed outrageous, but. Yes, it's extremely large. Okay. Uh, that's great. Um, I had a couple more comments. You had mentioned the temporary public art program on those pedestals. Uh, just a follow-up thought after our last meeting, how I think there was a little bit of heartburn among some of the commissioners, how we sort of paid for the temporary art fee and then you pay again for the, to keep the temporary art. I just wonder if we might consider permanent art in these places, uh, if that's a possibility. I know you said the RFP is going out next week, but. Uh, this is Laura Machado. So um, I think we discussed at our last meeting that this project was actually funded through public works money. And it was based on having temporary public art throughout the six wards. And it's, it differs from the way that the Arts Commission allocates funding because the percent for the arts fund that you are overseeing, it has very strict guidelines so that we have to when we're allocating funds, it has to be for permanent public art. So this was a way that the city could put in temporary installations for 12 months, and it could be a mural, it could be three-dimensional, it could be new media, um, and kind of open up the idea of, of what we have throughout the valley. So it was really an opportunity to use public works, actually it was um, capital improvement funds for this project, and to create a rotating installation so that Artwork is available throughout the city. We have such a high concentration in Ward 3, which is absolutely wonderful. There's so much artwork downtown, and this was a way to expand outside of it. Um, if you notice on the, on the slide here, so we have four of these concrete pads that have been placed on Main Street. So there will be more than one installation in Ward 3. One of the pads will have permanent public art 
installed. We've discussed it, it's not in the staff report right now, but Emergent by Yasmina and Javier, and it was funded through the arts, with the percent for the arts fund. We have three other pads that are on Maine and Colorado, Maine and Hoover, and Maine and Gas. These will be temporary installations for 12 months. And the idea is that this will be strictly 12 months temporary installations, and they wouldn't have, or we wouldn't necessarily have an option to purchase it if there was overwhelming um, praise from the community and they really wanted to, to keep it, then we would have to bring it to you. You would have to make a determination like we did at the last meeting and talk about making sure that it was something that would, we could maintain in a permanent you know, um, frame of reference. I, I, does that answer your question? Yeah, understood. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, I think it'll be great to see those concrete pedestals brought to life. Um, and it's great that it's coming from other funding mechanisms. Uh, my last comment or question was, I saw that graffiti on that sculpture. I actually recognize that tag as we just got tagged at our Huntridge uh, sign as well. And I just wondered, do, do you guys report that to, I think Metro has a database of, of taggers and I would just love to catch these guys and you know have a database of all their offenses so we can really hold them accountable. Uh, anyway, I was gonna get my camera out because I had it out anyway and take a picture of them. But I wouldn't know where to turn them into. Well, Metro keeps, you can call like the non-emergency number or I, uh, somewhere I've probably got an email and uh, they keep a database of these tags. So I was just, yeah. I would just hope and encourage the city yeah. does that because again, I recognize this particular tag and it's mm -hmm. uh, How many people curious. here live downtown? Hmm? How many people here live downtown? One? One? <laughs> well, I, I live at 3rd and Charleston, and it's ugly what's going on downtown with those little marking pens. Yeah. Can't hear me? Can hear you now. <laughs> yep. All right, it's ugly what's going on downtown with those little marking pens. It's all over the place, and I'm so angry all the time. <laughs> I wake up angry, I go to bed angry, and I wouldn't know where to turn them in. Rebecca Holden, to answer the question about graffiti and reporting it, the city of Las Vegas has the Go Vegas app, uh, which can be downloaded from a multiple uh, platforms, so either um, whichever smartphones you're using. But with that app, you can actually take photos and report it directly to the city's operations and maintenance team so that they can appropriately address it. And so in instances where public art is reported to them as having graffiti, they will defer to us and send it our way and then we can take care of it. Um, and to answer Member Curran's question about the reporting, we have previously reported graffiti tags to Metro's, uh, I think it was a gang unit or a graffiti unit, um, but I believe that unit had been disbanded but I hear it's back together and so we need to reestablish connections with them. But we had, in past years, had great success with them apprehending, I believe, the perpetrator perpetrators by identifying them based off of their tags. Thank you. Hi, this is Commissioner Strauss. I'm new to the commission. I have a question. Um, what is the percentage, because I just got in last meeting and saw this temporary art being purchased, what's the percentage of the metric or whatever? What artwork is temporary and the percentage that we end up purchasing at the end? Is there a statistic on that or how long has that been going on? Rebecca Holden. So the Contemporary Public Art Program was uh, dreamt up about 2016 and funded in 2017 or 2018. And then with the project development, we just concluded the first round. So okay. um, out of that, the I don't have the presentation from last month, but um, I believe we had the murals that stayed permanently and that was two of those. And then we additionally had the two Valentin Yordanov sculptures, which were temporary. Um, we had Brett Bolton's piece, which was temporary, Bobby Zokaita's piece, which was temporary, 
and the four Randy Mendray pieces, one of which was removed, and the other three are awaiting that um, our final negotiations with that and approvals. So um, the majority of them, I would say in theory, are temporary. Does that answer your question? The majority, so we're purchasing less than a majority. Commissioner Pacheco, uh, to have a, a discussion on, on short, how long these things are up, because as an artist myself, I wouldn't bother for one year, uh, you know, maybe a year and a half or two years to do something good and paint that much time into it. Will there be any future discussions on, on uh, the, the time limit on temporary art? Rebecca Holden, the, the Contemporary Public Art Program in particular, we um, had to submit an application packet when applying for these funds in particular. And so uh, the, the application process outlined how we would operate the program. Uh, and to give you an idea, most of these pieces will be allocated $10,000 for the artists for the temporary work. So um, you could think of it as $10,000 for a, a, an artwork that would be installed for a year. I only had one comment. This is uh, Chair Breer uh, with regard to the Charleston underpass piece. There's a famous picture from a newspaper many, many years ago of a kid doing a backflip and when it flooded, every time it would rain, it would flood at the Charleston Art underpass. And there's a famous picture of a kid doing a backflip from a, a light pole into the flooded waters. And if any of the artists who are considering doing a piece include that, I would, um, react very positively towards that. I think it's a, a very iconic picture, and so that's just my personal preference. So. Commissioner Pacheco? When I first mentioned this, that's what I thought of first thing, somebody diving into <laughs> a three-dimensional sculpture, somebody diving into yeah. or a backflip. Yeah. The very first thing I thought. So, okay, any of our colleagues on the phone have any comments uh, regarding the uh, proposals on hand in the report? Okay, thank you Commissioner very much. Commissioner Shefsink? Yes, Jerry, please, go ahead. Um, regarding the, the temporary uh, sculpture projects uh, for $10,000 for a year, I, I, mean, I see that as like a rental fee uh, for, for the pieces that you would put up for a year. And then it's like leasing a car, You certain payments you make towards the lease of the car, and then if you want to buy it at the end, you still have to pay more for it. So um, that's my analogy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Moving on to item number seven, report by the Office of Cultural Affairs staff regarding the current financial updates to the Percent for the Arts Fund. And for that, we turn to uh, Commissioner Hayes Hamblin. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Ali Haynes Hamblin. Uh, I passed out uh, just before the meeting began uh, one sheet uh, for our current percent for the arts uh, account, and I will just do um, a really quick summary of that. Uh, so this is a summary of the activity that took place in our fiscal in our recently completed fiscal year 20, uh, with a statement of what is available for future projects. Uh, beginning at the beginning of the year on July 1st, 2019, we had $872,400 in our appropriated funds. The appropriated funds are projects that have um, already been earmarked for funding, and this is largely our um, municipal court, city hall, public art project. Uh, there's a, there was an additional $50,000 included in this for um, one-time maintenance for some of our artworks in the parks. Uh, for unappropriated funds, our account had $311,403.91. At the end of fiscal year 20, we received a revenue transfer from the 1% uh, transfer from uh, capital improvement project budgets that are paid through our general fund of $87,335.82. Uh, leaving us with available funds of $398,739.73 in unappropriated funds. Um, I'll pause for just a quick moment to provide some clarification as to why we report appropriated versus unappropriated. The way that the ordinance works for the per percent for the arts fund is that um, 
The Percent for the Arts Fund cannot have at one time more than a million dollars in unappropriated funds in it. So when the funds come in, it's ideal if they are appropriated for a specific project as they come in uh, so that we don't hit that cap and have to turn away funding. Um, so just as a point of clarification, we're not very close to that at this point, but just as a point of clarification. Uh, our actual expenses incurred in fiscal year 20 were uh, $99,246.93. That was split just a little, very close to half and half between maintenance and conservation and project-related expenses. Encumbrances are expenses that we have uh, held money for in the system, but they haven't actually paid out yet. Uh, in our unappropriated funds, our encumbrances totaled $87,762.69. In our appropriated funds, those encumbrances totaled $773,100. That is largely the municipal court project. The way that our uh, purchasing and contract process works uh, here in the city is that in order to issue an RFP or initiate a project, we must encumber the funds so that our purchasing team knows for sure that we've got the funding to do it. That's why we have such large, large numbers in our encumbrances. So with these encumbrances, we are uh, left available for fiscal year 21 and beyond, $99,300 in the appropriated funds accounts uh, and $211,000 $730.11 in our unappropriated funds accounts. Uh, we do keep a reservation for maintenance um, in the appropriated funds. Remember that amount included $50,000 for one-time only maintenance for some of our park projects. We have $8,388.36 remaining of that $50,000. And for unappropriated funds, uh, we have $60,000 uh, that we reserve every year for maintenance of our public art projects in general. So this leaves us with a net after the reservation of maintenance funds of $90,911.64 in our appropriated funds account and $151,730.11 in our unappropriated funds accounts. Now we have um, previously voted uh, on this commission on a few projects that we have allocated funding for. And that list is here, the Community Tea Alley Project, Neonopolis Parking Garage, Third Street Poetry Project, the Amp Utility Project, and the Historic Markers and Medallions. Those um, projects, once we remove those from our available number from the unappropriated funds, that leaves us with $81,730.11 available for us to either hold or allocate to new projects for fiscal year 21 and beyond. Does anybody have any questions? Awesome, thank you. Okay, with the uh, city attorney's blessing, I would like to take number eight, and I, and I, and I hope that our, um, our guests in the audience aren't uh, waiting on number eight, but this, there's a, since there's a chance that there'll be likely um, long discussion on item number eight, I would like to move that to after um, agenda item 11, and we can take care of 9, 10, and 11, um, hopefully rather quickly, and get those businesses out of the way so we can spend more time on discussion of number eight. So with that, I'm gonna move to item number nine, discussion for publicable action regarding actions, timeline, and potential outcome for the Neonopolis parking garage mural located at 450 Fremont Street. It's $10,000 with a part of the Percent for Arts Fund in Ward 3, and for that I will turn it over to uh, Laura, who will present us with that. Thank you, Chair Brew. Um, we're gonna talk about the previously allocated money towards the Neonopolis Parking Garage mural. So this mural project was approved by the Arts Commission in 2017 the second of two mural projects in the parking garage. The first mural was funded by Economic and Urban Development and was completed in 2018. Due to various factors, the second mural has been delayed and we're bringing it back to the Arts Commission for a possible action to reallocate the funds. As mentioned um, previously at the last meeting, our budget transfer for FY21 will be zero dollars 
as opposed to FY20, which was what Ali had just mentioned, over, I think it was around $87,762, if that's um, right. Just this, a point of clarification. Yes. The um, budget transfer uh, to be used in FY22 will be $0, because the city's capital improvement budget for FY21 is zero. So if the city doesn't spend any money from their general fund on capital improvement, there's nothing to take 1% of. But for FY21, we got the transfer of $87,335.82. Okay, thank you, Allie, for You're clarification. Um, so we're bringing this back to the Arts Commission for possible discussion on whether or not you think it would be a good idea to reallocate these funds for this uh, mural project. David Strauss. Has left the conference. Huh. Okay. Um, any discussions? Anyone uh, have, a, have a viewpoint on whether... Um, so, so essentially, so I understand, you're suggesting that we take this item out and we can have that $10,000 back to spend either, you know, and, and to try to help pad our, our um, budget for the remaining, for the coming years and, and that this, that is withdraw this project. Okay. Anyone have any discussions about it? Very well. Do I hear a motion to approve the... David. Has joined the conference. David, we lost you for a minute, and I was offering the, um, any discussions on this particular topic. We're still on item. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got taken out there. Yeah. Uh, this is Member Curran. I will move to, uh, what am I moving to approve the not spending $10,000? What, what, what am I trying to say here? To unallocate. To unallocate. Thank you. That's the uh, $5 word I was looking for. Member Kern moving to unallocate $10,000 for the second mural in Fremont Street Experience, or the Neonopolis Garage. Donald Trump will second. Unallocate. Any seconds? There's a second. Uh, John Trump will second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. Now moving on to item number 10, discussion for possible action regarding the actions, timeline, and potential outcome for the Arts District Public Art Project Sculpture 2, located on Main Street between Gas Avenue and Colorado Avenue. $10,000 of, of the percent for the uh, arts were, were towards this. And for that one, we turn to Rebecca. Thank you, Chair Brewer. Rebecca Holden. So um, we looked at these earlier, these pedestals here. So this sculpture project was allocated $10,000 contingent upon an awarded grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. And that grant was not awarded, but staff was directed to continue to seek alternative funding partners. So um, we originally had brought this to you in July of, or sorry, in August of 2019. We found out that we did not have that grant funding in November of 2019, but we're still seeking out alternative funding. Uh, and then in July of 2020, those sculpture pedestals were, go were um, relocated to Main Street and um, have been reassigned for the Contemporary Public Art Program. So we wanted to bring this to you for consideration. Uh, you may be able to reallocate the funding allocated for this for another project instead. Okay. Any discussions on this topic? Do I hear a motion to deallocate the funds for this project? Anyone? I'll move. I'll move that we uh, deallocate the ten thousand dollars that we had for this project. Okay. Sprout will second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Then the motion carries. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number 11. Discussion for possible action regarding the appointment or reappointment of members to the Arts Commission, subcommittees, and ad hoc committees. Um, so this particular one, um, the, 
I'm gonna ask for staff's help to remind me what this, what this uh, task force is called, or what the subcommittee is called, because what we ended up having was too many people. So um, if anyone who signed up for this committee, um, I'm trying to find it on my list Re here. Rebecca Holden, if you, yeah. commissioners, you all have a printout of the current um, standing right now of the subcommittees in your backup section. It should be the last piece of paper in your backup section. Um, and that has the listing of the subcommittees and the ad hoc committees. And correct, Chair Brewer, it's the project development subcommittee that everybody was enthusiastically on board with um, joining. However, it has come to our attention that we have too many people and we can have no more than seven members, including the chair serving as ex officio on any of these, so. Yes, so. so um, I will um, entertain any volunteers to remove themselves from that committee. And then we'll vote. Member Curran, I'll nominate myself to be removed. Okay. Um, this is Commissioner Haynes Hamblin. I would be willing to step off of that committee as well. Okay. Um, so I guess the vote would be, if there's no other discussions, um, the vote would, or is there a motion to approve uh, Commissioner Kern and Commissioner Hayes Hamblin from uh, removing themselves from the committee. I'll, I'll make that motion. Any seconds? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. So now we're going to skip back up to item number eight, which is discussion and possible action regarding new projects to be f reviewed by the Arts Commission. And for that, we will start off with uh, Rebecca, who will give us a presentation, and then we'll talk about it. Thank you, Chair Breer. So um, if the commissioners in your backup section of your binders as well, if you um, scoot back a little bit before item 11 there, we have the um, backup documentation to support this. You've been provided with a briefing document that has a chart with a listing of projects, and then you've also been provided with a printout of a PowerPoint with a notes section, so you can make notes as we go along. And additionally, you've been provided with an 11 by 17 printout of a map which contains the locations of the current AMP projects. So I'm going to go through and just briefly introduce each one of these projects so you have an overview, um, and then we can invite anybody who's here as representatives of those projects to uh, provide any additional information you may need. Very good, thank you. So the first project is the AMP project, which um, is is a similar project to what we've done in years past. Um, and I should make a correction that the recommendation for the location is actually Ward 6 for that. So the first project is AMP project. The second one is AMP freestanding projects. And so that would be standalone projects so that as we receive calls from members of the public, we would be able to um, have those cabinets painted without being part of the larger projects. We then have painted crosswalks, which was a holdover from the October 2019 meeting where this project was discussed and it was determined that the commission would like to revisit it again this year. And then we have Ward 3 Proud, which is a city of Las Vegas uh, partnership between the Office of Cultural Affairs and the Redevelopment Agency, which has proposed artistically designed vinyl banners to enhance major thoroughfares in Ward 3 and instill community pride. And those would be on um, Eastern, Owens to Sahara, Bonanza, Maryland to Lamb, Stewart, Eastern to Lamb. And so now that you've had an, an overview of the projects that are up for consideration today, um, we can go through and discuss in more detail one by one at your discretion. This is Chair Breer. I really like the, and we d when, when it first came up, 
uh, the concept of the crosswalks and um, I, I, I don't know if the, if the commission has any kind of um, ability to, to venture into this, but I would imagine that there may be uh, grant money or money through the uh, National Traffic Highway Safety Administration or some other, some avenues, and there's an organization out of UNLV, it's their safety organization, but they handle a lot of data analysis for traffic, um, uh, for traffic in, in terms of crashes and, and pedestrian uh, uh, for, you know, crashes and that sort of thing. And so um, it, I, I think that there's a great opportunity, not just from an artistic standpoint, but from a, from a much larger scope in terms of um, traffic safety and, um, you know, and obvious PR and educational purposes. So um, I would like to keep this going, but, uh, but it, I, I don't know who would be able to take that up to make that a much larger project than just having an artist paint a sidewalk. I mean, paint a crosswalk. Commissioner so Pacheco? Uh. Uh, we discussed this before and afterwards. I took a drive all over downtown. And uh, cars going over artwork all day long, year uh, I mean, it, it, it's a mess. And uh, uh, they're downtown, they're painting the crosswalks like there's brick going across in the crosswalks. You know, that's, that's very basic. And, and, and if it's get black tire work on it, it doesn't matter. But trying to put art on the crosswalk, uh, I think, is foolish because it's it's money going nowhere. Uh, uh, but the idea that it could be safety to do with safety is a good idea. But to put artwork on there, I mean, I drove around looking at all of it, and and those tires really get it dirty unless we invent white tires. So this is Commissioner Haynes Hamblin. I'd like to offer a little bit of additional insight into some of the city's plans behind painted crosswalks. Um, the city is actually, um, this is something we've been talking about for most of the years that I've been with the city, and the maintenance is the chief concern. So we're actually conducting a, a test pilot this fall uh, with a painted, an artistically painted crosswalk in downtown, and I don't remember the exact cr uh, cross streets. Um, but it's being done in partnership with a locally owned business that's at that intersection. And the business owner has committed to the maintenance of the, of the crosswalk while the city's public works department has committed to the initial uh, installation of, of the, the artwork, essentially. Um, and we're doing this as a test pilot to see, first of all, if it works and if it's something that the local business owner is able to maintain so that it doesn't end up just looking like black tires. Um, and I would recommend in that context to keep this project on our list for consideration, but maybe move it forward to after that pilot project has been completed so that we can really see how that's worked, if that's been effective, and then the commission can elect to start contributing funding and design proposals to that project ongoing. Because we've had a lot of requests from all over the city. In particular, the Ward 3 office has gotten requests um, for specific crosswalks to paint for various um, reasons. So I just wanted to offer that context as well, that this is something that the city is working really hard to address. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Pacheco, um, when I drove around, I noticed that, well, the first thing I did was go down to the Bomb Museum. That was a mess, and, and it was done in a real dark color. But I noticed going up and down the streets, the stripes in the center were perfectly clean. Sure. They well, last a long time, so that would be a consideration. And maybe at crosswalks, maybe a certain section near the crosswalk could be artwork in the center, which wouldn't be touched very much. Yeah. Um, I have a question for our um, advisors from the city attorney. Um, as we develop these projects, th th it's one agenda item, and so with, with, with regard to voting on them, um, do we vote one? You know, do we, do we just pick the ones we want and make one vote for the whole group, or, or should we vote on each of these independently? And It can be done either way or any other way. Um, you know, if there's some sort of, it seems like there's some kind of consensus from the discussions, yeah. it could be done in one motion, but otherwise, if there doesn't seem to be consensus, okay. then it could be done individually. Okay. Does anybody on the uh, commission have a... 
I, yeah, this is member Kern. I, I agree with uh, member Haynes Hamblin. Let's wait and see on that thousand bucks. I think it, it sounds great in theory, the painted crosswalks. I've long championed the idea. I've seen it work well in other cities. Uh, having had conversations with Jerry Walker, who runs operations and maintenance for the city, uh, he's explained to me that the, our combination of asphalt coupled with the lack of rainfall and a few other factors makes it really impossible here. Um, I, I went to the Mob Museum one, I think two weeks after it was uh, installed, and you, you, know, you could hardly even notice it too. So I happen to really like this artist. I think it's a great idea. I just have reservations about the uh, efficacy of it. So yeah, let's wait and see. Uh, maybe I'll be delightfully surprised, but. And if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, uh, Commissioner Hamblin's recommendation is to approve it, but we wait to act on it until after the. Sorry, I, to clarify, my okay. recommendation would be to wait okay. on allocating funding for it okay. until we see that the, uh, this pilot uh, concept really works. Okay. Commissioner Pacheco, I think that would be a great idea, and I don't know when we discuss it, but Say, take some to look at the center aisles, maybe just before the intersection, because when I drove all around, any anything was a mess, including the mob museum was a total mess. And I don't know when we discovered did discover that we discussed that last year, did we? Yes. yes. Yeah, and it was a mess when I drove down there. Okay. But center aisles are, perf are perfect. All right. So I'm going to move that we uh, do not consider this project for next year, but ask the, uh, um, our, our colleagues in the um, cultural affairs to bring it back to our attention again at another time. Any seconds? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. Okay. So then, uh, uh, let's see, then we have the AMP project, let's, let's go to that one. This is Member Curran. I'm curious, uh, I see homogenous Ward 2 where I live. Just, I, I'm wondering if the city of Las Vegas has restrictions in Summerlin and their master plan community overlay. Do they, do they restrict this sort of thing or, you know, they like everything fitting perfectly in their little homogenous code? <laughs> um, this is Laura Aguirre Machado. I have worked with the Homeowners Association in Summerland, and it has been quite challenging to install public art. Um, we had a storm drain mural project that went in, and it was actually removed by mm. the Homeowners Association, and, and they were notified of it. And then after a conversation we had, they, were, they allowed us to reinstall it on a different location. We also had proposed to place a three-dimensional installation for the contemporary project in Summerland, and we were denied uh, access to that as well. Mm -hmm. But we always go, out, go to the Homeowners Association and ask for um, their blessing on um, when we're, we're working on these projects, and it is, it is challenging. I had a weed grow in my front yard and got a real nasty grant for it, <laughs> so I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah. I, I believe from the report um, that this was, we're going to focus on Ward 6 mm -hmm. this, uh, this time around. So these, these projects have been very good and, and they're very well received and they seem to be pretty tight and easy to accomplish. So um, I'm going to move that we appro approve the AMP project for um, our, our the, to um, continue forward with $10,000 allocated to it. Okay. It's very personal. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that one. Yeah. It'll make it easy on you. Yeah, thank you. So. I, uh, this is Sprout, I second. All in favor, say aye. 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 On the opposed? Aye. And that portion carries. Now we're going to talk about the AMP freestanding projects. Um, from what I gather, this is like a one-off one -off ones that pop up every now and then. Uh, yes, Rebecca Holden. So you may recall I put some pictures in of some projects we'd done previously called AMP Downtown. And this was in response to requests made um, from, I believe, the Department of Public Works 
to beautify some of these large uh, water district backflow cabinets that had gone in. And so with that funding, that extra funding, we were able to accommodate those requests. Um, however, we don't have that funding anymore, and so we're asking for the Arts Commission to consider allocating uh, a small amount so that when we continue to receive requests like this, we may be able to accommodate them. Um, if the Arts Commission does elect to go this route and allocate funding for this, then we would, of course, bring every new location to you for consideration as well. Okay. Any discussions? I move that we approve this uh, project and funding as part of the package that we are considering. This is Mr. Jessick, second. Oh, there you go. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Then that carries. And uh, that brings us to Ward 3 Proud, which is the uh, proposed artistically designed vinyl banners. Uh, any discussion on this one? Rebecca Holden, I did just want to say real quick, we have a representative from the Department of Economic and Urban Development present, um, as well as a representative from the Ward 3 office. So if, if you would like to hear, they can provide a lot more information about the project and do a great representation of it. Absolutely, would you please come forward and, and state your name for us so that we know who we're addressing. For the record, Brenda Hughes, City of Las Vegas, Economic and Urban Development with the Redevelopment Division. The budget you see laid out here is for an eight block area only. I know we've got three areas designated. The budget would not cover all of this, but it would be a start towards a nice project to enhance these particular, or at least one of these communities. The redevelopment agency is involved because, of course, any enhancement or beautification helps us with business development for those particular areas. We are actually looking in our budget to see if we can find a small portion of this budget that we can actually assist with. But the more funds we can put into it, the more we'll be able to help out Ward 3 and perhaps even do two of these areas rather than just one. Hello, members. My name is Idolina Iteralde. I represent uh, Councilwoman Olivia Diaz on Ward 3. And this project was brought about in discussions f through our efforts to help beautify the easternmost part of the ward. And that's why some of those locations are identified. Uh, and again, we understand if only one of them were to be funded. And the interest is to bring a sense of pride back to the area. As you may know, that uh, this area is very mature. It's one of the oldest parts of the city, and we'd like to help revitalize and put the city's foot first, and then hopefully attract additional businesses for the corridor. Happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Pacheco, uh, I, I'm familiar with that area. I was born at 27th in Charleston. It's a large Hispanic area. And what will be done to get Hispanic artists from the high schools and the schools to create a lot of that art? We can definitely reach out to some of the schools and begin talks about the communication for various arts. We want to see it all come together. But you're right, it's predominantly Hispanic in the area. So we like to see some eclectic art. It should represent the area of the artwork. Definitely. Commissioner Pacheco, I'm sorry. This is Chair Breer. Will the, will the City Cultural Affairs be participating in the selection of the artists, or um, is this, will, this the, will the art prod, part, portion of it be handled by the um, redevelopment agency? Uh, Rebecca Holden, it's my understanding that um, the departments would work together, but cultural affairs would likely facilitate the project from start to finish, and, um, but we would work with all the stakeholders included so that everybody's on the same page with how we're going about sourcing artists, sourcing the artworks, what the content is going to be, what the expectations are, so that um, we're all supportive of it together. And of course, if the Arts Commission is allocating funding towards it, then the Arts Commission would contribute to those conversations as well about the scope of a project like this. Okay. 
Brenda Hughes, I'd like to add to that. The forte of the redevelopment agency is not the selection of art, so we're more than happy to work with the Office of Cultural Affairs. Very good, thank you. This is member Curran. I think uh, while Ward 3 probably has the highest concentration of public art of any wards, I'd love to see the uh, eastern portion of the ward uh, brought to life with some great art because I think it, it's really clustered in the, uh, the western portion of the ward. So I uh, appreciate the efforts of economic development and uh, Councilman Diaz's office. And uh, my, my only question is what is the budget we're allocating? It's to be determined. What are we voting on then? Is it's right here on your screen now, John. Rebecca what? Holden, if you'll, oh. if you'll reference this budget, so this budget was calculated based off of the banner project we have along 1st Street right now, um, the Aerial Gallery, which is funded through a separate pot of money from Public Works. Um, but it was calculated with that information in mind. So it's broken down based on the um, approximate cost for printing and production of those banners for the actual labor to install and remove the equipment and the banners, and then also the um, equipment themselves that needs to be installed on the light poles, which can be the most costly of a project like this. And then also the compensation of any participating artists. So um, it was intentionally left as TBD because there are a lot of variables in this project, but um, I believe the intent was to give you an idea of the, co the estimated cost where it could wind up being so that you could have an idea of where you would feel comfortable allocating funding to that. Um, this is Commissioner Sprout. Uh, so if we're looking at this budget and would the banners be reprinted and installed and in new artwork every year or what's that scope look? Because that would be $16,000 of the budget every year. Rebecca Holden, it would really be up to um, the direction of the Arts Commission and the stakeholder group as a whole with how they envision the project going. So um, those projects can be costly to maintain on an annual basis, um, especially with all the many steps that go into facilitating the acquisition of the rights to use artwork and such. Um, but it's really up to the commission. So if if you allocated funding today, then we would then begin working with these stakeholder groups to identify a set of parameters that would be agreeable. So including how long the banners would be up for, because I think two years is probably all they can stay up without needing to be reprinted and then hung up again. So they could have the same imagery for an extended period of time, but would just have to have ongoing maintenance. Commissioner Pacheco. Um, uh, I would like more discussion on this, maybe at the next meeting, on how we're going about getting more Hispanic representation, because that's a very largely Hispanic area. That could be a part of the RFQ discussion. Okay. Do, it doesn't have, it doesn't negate that we could allocate funding at this time. Uh, my other question would be is, and I don't know, I haven't driven Eastern in a while, but this area that we're discussing, is that 45 miles an hour, 35? Because I don't know if banners are necessarily going to work in a situation where you're, it's driving fastly. Commissioner Pacheco, um, on Stewart, I think it's 35 from, from what they're talking about, and it's, it's good driving, plenty of time to see banners. On Bonanza, it's a little, my, I don't think it goes up to 40. But there's not a lot of mess in the way. You know, you can see banners, you know, because there's homes and then there's businesses, and it was rural beyond Bonanza. Uh, so banners can be seen quite visibly, not like in downtown where we have trees in between the banners and you can't see them here anymore. Uh, but it's very visible down there. Bow Street Stewart is at Stewart from uh, uh, Las Vegas to Lamb and Bonanza, Las Vegas Boulevard to Lamb. Eastern to Lamb. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I just, I like it's to Eastern. go down there to those grocery stores at Bonanza and, and Eastern, and it, everything would be quite visible all the way up to uh, Las Vegas Bullard, and then we wanted to take a drive all the way out to, uh, out to Lamb, and then uh, Stewart the same way. It, Stewart's a pretty good fast driving street, so I don't think you have any trees growing on the side of the road, to, anything to block the vanners. And if I may add, Edolina here uh, through you, Chair, this community or this part of town actually has quite a bit of foot traffic. So we have a lot of walkers, commuters, bus takers. So 
It's not just for the drivers either. We have a lot of visibility just on foot. And I'd like to, Brenda Hughes, I would like to add one thing concerning the budget. Should the commission decide to fund the entire eight blocks, the redevelopment agency will continue to look within the budget to add funds to it as well to perhaps extend or start on the second corridor as well. Ms. Member Kern, are there other funding mechanisms you might be able to pursue? Would it be possible that we contribute a portion to maybe get the ball rolling for you to find sources elsewhere too? That, that is a possibility. Uh, Again, I do not know at this point. Uh, we're still discussing what the redevelopment agency can bring to it. Uh, so we would be part of the funding, whatever the commission could bring forward. And we can certainly look at other sources as well. I don't know what those are at this point. Um, I had a question uh, for clarification on the ordinance. That's probably for our city attorney. Um, I just wanted to ensure that a project of this nature is allowed within the ordinance of the percent for the arts funding mechanisms uh, because our ordinance is pretty specific about permanent public art and um, and not signage and I just wanted to ensure that this would not run afoul of that if the commission were to approve it Rebecca Holden all um just add, you all have, I've placed a tab in your binders that sticks out pretty far. It's either bright green or bright blue, and it's a tab um, directing you to the segment of the administrative regulations where it identifies artworks that would be considered eligible or ineligible. Uh, you can reference that. That isn't the ordinance itself, which I have here and can reference, but in the interim, um, you should have a tab in your binder that you can flip to near the back that identifies that specific spot in the administrative regulations. And so I will um, read this section, which is on page three, a listing of eligible artworks, artwork of either two or three dimensions that may be integrated into structure into the structure of a public works project building landscape or other fixture or element in any material or media of combination thereof two or three dimensional artwork of any material or media or combination thereof enhancements to public works projects buildings landscapes and or any standardized fixtures and elements that are designed by an artist or by design teams which include artist members New genres, including video, electronic and digital art, holography, video, and additional technology-based forms as they evolve. The listing of ineligible artworks as artworks includes, but is not limited to, commercially mass-produced objects of standard designs, except where these elements are integral parts of an original artwork. Reproductions by mechanical or other means of original works of art, except in cases of film, video, photography, printmaking, or other media arts. Directional elements such as super graphics, signage, or color coding, except where these elements are integral parts of an original artwork. Decorative, ornamental, or functional elements which are not designed by an artist. Landscape architecture and landscape gardening, except where these are designed by an artist and or are an integral part of an artwork. I'd like to add a comment. Sorry, this is Idolina again. I believe, uh, Commissioner Kern, um, to go back to your comment about additional funding, I mentioned it would be my goal to set up on um, these corridors where we were allocated funds to set up business associations in hopes that the, these associations by the businesses on, along these corridors could take part in an association like and then eventually be vested in, in caring for this and possibly acquire those funds through other grants as well once they're organized. So it is my goal to work on those corridors for a business association. Pacheco here. Uh, 
Do you mean that, that the businesses would use those banners for business sources or business art? No, it wouldn't change the nature of what these banners are gonna be created for. It would just help organize these areas of businesses. That way, as, as they become organized, they're eligible for additional grants, similar to Neighborhood Partners Fund. Those Neighborhood Partners Fund grants allow neighborhood associations to apply for money and beautify their specific areas, and I would hope that we could find something along the same lines for businesses. Mm -hmm. But none of, none of the, the art would be detailed towards the business, so it would be pure fine art? Um, I don't think it would affect the art. Um, maybe I don't understand. I would oppose if anything that isn't just artist, from an artist to go up there. Anything to do with business would be advertising or, or marketing. Yep. This program is not designed to be uh, advertising for businesses, but it is to enhance and beautify the neighborhood. For that reason, we do want curated art, if you will. Any other questions for the presenters? Thank you so much for coming to, uh, to talk to us, and thank you for your patience in allowing us to jump the, Thank this you for your consideration. Item. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to, before I move to approve this, I wanted to find out, because these are only the projects that the uh, Office of Cultural Affairs has presented to us, and I wanted to be sure that none of the commissioners had any projects to propose before we um, approve this one in case, you know, I don't, I don't want to commit all of our money to something and then so, uh, another idea comes up that has a better, uh, has a better impact for the city. Anyone uh, have any additions to this list? This is Member Curran, just a, a thought, you know, again, I'm a, a, a proud Ward 3 enthusiast, but this is, uh, you know, 33,000 bucks for one, one of six wards. You know, often when you do fundraising and such, I think like your first 10 grand is the hardest 10 grand. So I wonder if we might consider allocating, uh, you know, 10 or 15,000 bucks to then hope, hopefully let them go leverage that and uh, uh, raise additional funds, funds from there. I mean, I, I forgot the exact number of our budget, but you know, 33,000 bucks mm -hmm. uh, takes a good chunk of it. Commissioner Pacheco, um, I drive up and down those streets quite a bit, not Stewart so much, but those, those, those two areas are in very good, bad need of something like this. Yeah. Very bad need of it. Um, before, so before, I, I, I wanted to, to, to go back to my question because we can discuss this, but I want to make sure that there's no other outstanding projects that have not been uh, presented before we discuss this one. So does, uh, if any of the commissioners on the phone have any projects that they wanted to submit, or if anyone here, now is your time to bring those up so that we know that we can pretty much uh, determine that this is the list that we're going to work from. Okay, now we can talk about the, 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 the this particular one. I think it, I, I, I like uh, Commissioner Curran, Curran's idea about, um, you know, maybe there's the, um, it, this is an opportunity to raise money through the, um, the mayor's, um, um, mayor's fund? The mayor's fund uh, to try to, to, to get additional money. Um, and so um, we can, you know, we can, we can always um, allocate some money to get it started and then we can revisit this later in the year if, they, if, uh, if we wanted to um, fund a different portion of it. You know, I, th I think what's, what's always kind of uh, a throwback, I think, for all of us here is like this project hasn't been discussed and it just popped up today. And so, you know, we haven't had an opportunity to, you know, drive Eastern and get kind of wrap around it. So this is why we're struggling to make this decision. You know, is it something that we could hold off on and revisit next month? Would that be a possibility instead of jumping into something without having the chance to really think about it? Commissioner Pacheco, uh, I think that's a good idea because everybody keeps saying Eastern. That's not the point. They're mentioning Las Vegas Boulevard to Lamb on Stewart and Las Vegas Boulevard to Lamb on Bonanza. 
those are two major thoroughfares for Hispanics to get downtown. And, and they're very important thoroughfares, as is uh, Alta and Evergreen and streets like that, uh, and Oki. So, yeah. but this is the east, and, and, and it's very bad need of that stuff. I think, it, for, from my viewpoint, I think it's such a splendid idea, and it's such a wonderful thing that I, that I'm a little bit hesitant to um, approve it right now because I think it can be bigger. I yes. think it can be more important. Yes, and it can I be agree. more community. Check so, um, so what if we uh, consider allocating? 10,000 now, and then in the next month, perhaps that helps them leverage other other uh, funding opportunities. You know, if it it's tough to be the first one to make the jump. When someone says, "Oh, you know, the Arts Commission already kicked in 10 grand," maybe maybe our day is able to scrounge up some more money. So perhaps we allocate 10 grand today and and reconsider uh, down the road. Would that make sense? Is that anyone, I mean, is anyone else? Commissioner Pacheco, uh, because everybody kept mentioning Eastern, I can see that people qu really don't quite understand the east side of town because they don't go down there that much. But uh, it's, it's the two major thoroughfares that need the work. I was on a committee many, many years ago to pick the sculptures that are in front of the East Las Vegas Community Center at Eastern and Bonanza. That's the only art from there to Sunrise Mountain. And, on, and that's on Stewart and Eastern. And on Bonanza, I don't think there's anything from downtown all the way to the mountain. It's been just forgotten. So anyway, I think we should take the time to take a look at this, and I think uh, we should all know wh which streets we're talking about and, and what they look like before you make any decisions. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Laura Machado. I just wanted to um, bring up what Commissioner Haynes Hamlin had mentioned about the ordinance on the funding for the Percent for the Arts. And um, although Rebecca read it, thank you for reading it, um, we typically fund permanent public art within city infrastructure. So if a portion of this project was funded, it could go towards the permanent aspect of this project, like the hardware. If they're going to continue um, working on this kind of project, that would be a permanent aspect within this. So I just wanted to throw that out there for consideration because we have to be aware of where the funding is going and what, what we're using it for. That's a, that's a very good point. Um, so any, any of our colleagues on the phone have any comments? Very well, so do I hear, um, so that could bring it up to 16861 if we wanted to, um, if, if, if we go with Laura's suggestion. Um, does Commissioner Curran have a motion? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm curious to hear, <laughs> I, I've, I've thrown out my thought. I don't know, I'm curious to hear if others, uh, I guess we'll find out in a vote, but uh, you know, if others are supportive of such a arrangement. Yeah. Well, I, this is Commissioner Haynes Hamblin, and I mean, I have to say I really appreciate uh, Commissioner Sprout's comment that I would like to give it until the next commission meeting to really consider it, drive the neighborhood, and, you know, think about the number that we're comfortable with. Okay. So Commissioner Pacheco, I think that is a great idea. Uh, we don't know enough about the area. Well, I do, about the two streets. They're even saying Eastern. It's not Eastern. Yep. And uh, we, we have more time for all of us to learn more about what we're dealing with. Yeah, and I, I guess my last comment uh, would be that if, I mean, for us the fun hardware is kind of, kind of sucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what we do should be funding artists, not the mm -hmm. hardware part of it. So mm -hmm. that's where I kind of struggle with it. Commissioner well. Pacheco, um, the lady that was discussing getting together with businesses on those streets, there's a lot of Hispanic businesses and they're doing very well. And that would be a possibility to get some funding. Okay. Very well. Um, do, you have, do you want to Can I? Yeah, if, if you're ready, I would yeah. motion to 
postpone this discussion until next month. I second the motion. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Then we will postpone this particular item until and be able to discuss it as a separate item. So that concludes the um, agenda item number eight. So then we move to number 12, discussion regarding topics for future agenda items. Comments made during this portion of the agenda by individual members shall refer solely to the purposes of future agenda items and any discussion shall be limited to whether or not such proposed items are within the purview of the commission and or whether such proposed items shall be placed on a future agenda. No discussion regarding the substance of any of these proposed topics shall occur and no action shall be taken. Do any of the commissioners have any uh, topics for future agenda uh, items? Commissioner Pacheco, um, uh, from our last discussion on, on steel and finishes, I will give a short talk on, on uh, powder coating. I will learn that. I'm gonna see a big powder coating company and also research, do some research on what they're doing new with steels the finished product that lasts a long time, because you know a lot have been done in the last few years, and I'm way out of way out of <laughs> way out of it. But uh, you know they say Corten steel and, and stainless steel, but I'm sure they've done a lot more, and there's a lot no more mention. So I'm going to research that and give just a quick little thing next time about that, so we all understand when artists come up and talk about it. Excellent. Anyone else? Very well, we will move on to item number 13, citizens participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No subject may be acted upon by the commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record. The amount of discussion on any subject as well as the amount of time any speaker is allowed may be limited. Is there anyone who wishes to discuss? Seeing none. We will move to item number 14, which is adjournment, which will happen at the moment I hit this gavel. Whoa. We are adjourned. Have a good Thank night. You.